So, hi everyone, I'm with Andrew Polstra, mathematician at Blockstream, and let's start with this new block. So, the first question is uh, what's your background and how did you met Bitcoin? So, in 2011, I heard of Bitcoin on Slashdot. Um, somebody posted a comment uh, trying to describe how it worked, and what they said, I, I don't remember what they said, but it was very clearly broken. Um, it was just nonsense. I think they were talking at the time about people like trading hashes. Like you mm -hmm. find these very hard to find hashes, and then somehow you sell this hash, and, and that doesn't make any sense because once you know a hash, then everybody knows it. Um, and so I went looking into this. I thought, oh, all these these stupid nerds have made this broken system, and I'm going to go tell them what's what. And so I, I found some website, I guess Bitcoin.org, and I read a lot about it over the next year or two. Um, and I realized that actually Bitcoin doesn't work at all like what the slash dot person was talking about. And then in 2013, I joined an IRC channel called Bitcoin Wizards, which is a collection of uh, researchers, like academic cryptographers and non-academic cryptographers and all sorts of people doing applied cryptography for the purpose of Bitcoin. And uh, I started hanging out on there at the same time that I started doing my PhD at the University of Texas. And after a couple of years of that, I found that I was spending all of my time on IRC and no time going to school. So I, I <laughs> stopped doing school and started doing Bitcoin full time. Yeah, it happened uh, too many. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's where I came from. Yeah, Bitcoin is a full time job, but when you discover it, you change your life forever. Yeah. Yes. So yesterday you talked uh, during the Milan Bitcoin Meetup about Bulletproof uh, and uh, the link uh, is in the description if you want to look and watch the video. What do, um, do they enable? Well, Bulletproof <coughs> were originally created just as a way to do efficient range proof, which are a tool used uh, in confidential transactions to let people hide the amounts of their transactions without enabling any funny business. So the reason that in Bitcoin all of the amounts are, are there in every transaction for people to see is so that people can know that nobody's printing or, or destroying Bitcoin. Um, and if you hide these amounts, people can't check this. Um, so it is, it's very easy to hide them in a way that people can still check that it adds up, but checking that, that nothing negative was being created, that nothing was like split into a large negative amount and a large positive amount, which just cancel out. Um, that requires something called a range proof. And so bulletproofs were, were created for that. But they're actually a much more general tool. Um, they can be used to prove um, statements about pretty much arbitrary computations. Um, so anything that you could express with a program um, and verify. Um, the, you can't do like arbitrary loops, you can't do arbitrary computations, but you can verify that a given computation worked the way that it did that you actually gave some input and it looped so many times and so forth. So this is uh, the same thing that lots of systems in the news use, like Snarks and Starks and all of this, uh, these, these zero-knowledge systems. Bulletproofs are a zero-knowledge proof system that can be used to uh, to secretly prove knowledge of, of any secret key or secret input or hash pre-image or, or whatever computation you can think of. Uh, this is pretty brand new. Uh, the paper was just released uh, Yesterday? Uh, well, yes, yeah, so we, we sent the final version to the conference yeah. yesterday. Um, wow. so, we, yeah, so we got our, uh, the reviewer comments back from the IEEE Security and Privacy Conference, I think, a month ago, two months ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we just finished uh, finalizing everything, getting the final benchmarks in place. Uh, and yes, yeah, so I, we, we ran those benchmarks yesterday and submitted them yeah. through, <laughs> early this morning. So it's very new. Is there a common thread between uh, the work on bulletproofs and um, your previous works uh, on script, less scripts uh, and Mimbo Wimbo? Are they separated or they can be integrated uh, with bulletproof? So the range proof connection is very much a connection between bulletproofs and Mimbo Wimbo. So Mimbo Wimbo is based off of confidential transactions. Um, and in Mimbo Wimbo, the most expensive to verify part of the system is all of these range proofs. So bulletproofs definitely make uh, these range proofs much, much cheaper and much, much smaller for verifiers, which, uh, since that was a bottleneck in the system, uh, really, really speeds it up. But also the more general thing, these arbitrary program computations can also be used in scriptless scripts. So if you want to 
do some sort of like smart contracting, scripting ability in Mimblewimble, you can use Bulletproof to produce signatures where the only way to, to produce uh, the signature is by, say, solving some hard computation or, or obeying the rules of some contract or doing something outside of the chain. Um, because Bulletproofs are so general, they can be used for this sort of thing. So they can be used to add uh, capabilities to Mimblewimble that otherwise would not be possible, um, or rather would be possible very much less efficiently, much more slowly, and uh, more time consuming, and large, more communication. <laughs> so uh, these interviews are educational, and I really believe in the power or of continuing education about uh, uh, Bitcoin. And one thing you are famous are your very clear papers on various topics uh, like uh, mining or altcoins. And the link is in the description. They've been very useful to many. Are you planning to create other educational stuff? So at some point, I would like to write something about the difference between program execution and program verification. Um, because these are, are very related ideas. And in Bitcoin, and, and also in most other altcoins, like Ethereum takes us to the extreme, the way that people verify the programs execute correctly is to, by running them over and over. And people confuse the ability to run programs with the ability to verify programs. Uh, these are really fundamentally different things. Uh, and verification is, can be much easier and it can be much more private. You can verify things in zero knowledge. If you don't even know the input uh, to a program, you can still verify that it ran correctly. And, um, and this has consequences both for the way people structure things. Um, like when you're writing a program, you might think that uh, that division is a much more expensive operation than multiplication, for example. But if you're verifying, they're the same, right? The way that you verify a division is somebody gives you two, two numbers and then the verifier can multiply them and then that proves that the product is the product divided by one number equals the other kind of thing. Um, and there are, more, there, there are much more dramatic examples uh, where it's not just like one takes five times as long as the other. It's like one is impossible and the other is, is not like signature verification. It's impossible for somebody to make a signature without a secret key, but anybody can verify a signature. Um, so that's one reason that things are different, is that you, you want to design it, uh, you want to design what you're doing to exploit what's efficient in a verification system, even if that's not necessarily efficient in a, in a model where people are all running computations. But also it gives a lot more power to do analysis um, and to prove things about what their um, programs are doing. So in general, it's very hard to say anything about arbitrary computations. But in general, you can say a lot of stuff about arbitrary verifications. Um, you, you can prove, uh, for example, that some verification will only take so much time to, to run through and, and to prove. Um, you can prove that, that something doesn't create money and it doesn't, doesn't violate whatever kind of external rules you want to impose. And making these kind of claims about arbitrary, loopy computations that might not even terminate is impossible. But if you're only thinking about verification, then your scope is so limited that suddenly these things are possible. Um, so that even though um, you're verifying these arbitrary computations, you have all of this power available, the verification is the only thing that hits the blockchain. And the verification is much more much more easy to handle. Well, can't wait to read it. <laughs> you brought me the calendar of a year with SIPA and I was very, very happy. But since I admire, and I'm not the only one, your style, and in particular the consensus of 2017 uh, outfit was my favorite, and uh, link is in the description too, don't worry. Can I hope for a year with Anthropostra for 2000 and uh, um, 19 at this point? You can hope. I'm hoping too. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and I've, I've been asking Sam, like, please make a calendar of me. Um, every, every day I ask him, he says, well, well, one day. One but day. I think, I think if enough people, if we all write letters to Samson or write emails or you know, mail him a letter, a handwritten letter saying, oh, please make an Andy Toshi calendar, I think that would really go a long way toward making this happen. So, Samson, please listen to us. We are asking for another calendar with Andrew for 2019. It's very important for us. 
<laughs> okay, thank you very much uh, for okay. being Milena for the talk uh, yesterday at the meetup and this uh, brief interview. And I'll see you again next time. Of course. Thank you. <laughs>